Rivera, Liz, a school bus driver, was fired for using her own car to pick up freezing students because the bus wouldn't start. How do you fire someone who goes above and beyond the call of duty? Okay, Mark, she can't just drive around and pick up kids in her own car. I'd be completely freaked out if I saw my kids being loaded into some random black SUV, wouldn't you? I'm really not surprised that she was fired. We're going to talk about it later on Square Off. There are tens of thousands of medical marijuana users in Canada with licenses to grow their own. But in four weeks, they'll be asked to destroy their pot plants and go to a government-approved grower to purchase their medicine. This would be like having to swallow a pill with bong water, or so people tell me. Uh, they say going to a licensed grower will mean higher costs and not necessarily equal quality. Many are saying it doesn't matter what the new law says. They will continue to plant and harvest their own pot from home. Police associations across Canada have been dealing with abuse of medical marijuana programs. The Canadian press reported evidence of trafficking for personal gain as well as organized crime. Joining us today to talk about this hotly debated issue, we have Alison Murden. She's a medical marijuana user and a spokesperson for law enforcement against prohibition. On the phone, Superintendent Ron Taverner. He's the chair of Substance Abuse Committee with the Ontario Association of the Chiefs of Police. Allison, I'd like to begin with you. Will you comply with the new law, or will you continue to buy from your current grower, uh, even though that person is going to lose their license? Hi, Mark. Hi, Liz. Hi, everybody. I want people to know that as a retired corrections officer, I don't want to break the law, but I also don't want to go back on 32 pills a day and 2,000 milligrams of morphine, which I took for 18 years. So I definitely have a dilemma. I don't want to be arrested. I've heard that uh, through the grapevine that large numbers like myself are looking at facing arrest, possible arrest for this issue, and we are very concerned. Okay, so. so Superintendent, what would be the penalty for someone like Allison who was uh, caught uh, growing her own marijuana after April 1st? Well, it, the, the current laws that are uh, in place for uh, cultivation would, would apply. Uh, th there's no change to the criminal code when, in relation to those types of offenses. Um, I think where the dilemma comes is that the number of licensed growers that are in place now are obviously, as of April 1st, will no longer exist. And if people continue to, to grow, and again, it would depend on the quantity of, of plants that they have, it would depend on what charges would be laid. So, you know, if, if someone is growing, growing one or two plants, it's different than someone that's growing 50 or 100 plants. Okay, Ron, so having said that, how vigilant do you think law enforcement uh, will be for people that are growing using a couple of plants as they are now even though it'll be illegal after the first of april um you know this isn't exactly like the uh, you know your neighbor who has a uh, a grow up uh, happening down the street this yes. is someone who's got a couple of plants right and, and and police will treat each case as it comes to them and, uh, and i can't speak for every police service but but certainly uh from from our perspective we will treat uh those type of cases, a small quantity, small number, as, uh, as something where there may be uh, a fine levied or there may be a caution, in fact. So, again, it's hard to say without knowing the circumstances of each case on how it will be dealt with. Uh, Allison, did you want to respond to what you just heard? Well, I do know that, again, there are a large number of patients out of the 40,000 that are licensed across the country, and we are talking medical cannabis here, not just regular drugs on the street. So I want What's people the to difference, understand. Allison? There's a big difference Tell because us. medical cannabis has actually been licensed in Canada since 1999, and I myself have had it on prescription since 1994. So people have to realize that this is medical that we're talking about. It's not an issue of drug trafficking at all. It's an issue of possibly somebody, a patient, one patient passing it to another patient, and that they call trafficking. So people like myself are a little put out about these issues. You know, we don't want to see anybody arrested, and we don't think, even if it's a social consumer, that they should be going to jail for drugs. Okay, Allison, while, while we're talking about this, can you give us an idea of what, you, what it costs you now to pay for your medical marijuana and what that cost will be like come April. You bet. It's pennies a day, literally, Mark, that I've been paying my growers 
to get everything from ice cream to chocolate to lasagna to soups on back. And I also smoke medical cannabis. I smoke up to 30 cigarettes a day to chase this terrible pain I have in my face and head every day called Tick Dollar Roo. Literally, like I said, I know come April 1st, I'm either going to have to go back on 32 pills a day and 2,000 milligrams of morphine, or we're going to have to win this lawsuit that we're fighting in British Columbia. Uh, super, so, Superintendent, I want to ask you about the abuse that was that existed when their uh, people were able to, to grow their own. Um, do you think that that's going to eliminate any type of abuse, or, or is that something that's still going to have to be uh, overseen pretty diligently? I, I honestly believe that I think there's really two issues here. And, you know, I, I do really feel for Allison that uh, her situation, uh, but the ability for her for her to get uh, medical marijuana will still be there, albeit it'll be a different system. No. Um, so she still will be able to get a prescription. She'll still be able it to order her, her uh, medical marijuana. Um, so, so that will continue. Different process, and and I understand that. And a different expense. It's going to cost substantially more. Exactly, money. Liz. It's going to cost yeah. me over a thousand dollars a day for my prescription. I cannot afford that when I'm paying pennies as I go now. Ron, there you go. There's your problem right there. A thousand dollars a day would 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 I? And I hate to say this, but if I was faced with the same dilemma as Allison, and I think most people would say, you know what? I'm going to take my chances that the cops exactly. are not going to come and bust my door down and grow my couple of plants here. That's and why so many If it's a case-by-case case basis, people like Allison would get more than the benefit of the doubt we'd like to think. Well, I, I would like to think that, that not only the police but the courts will be reasonable in, in whatever uh, actions are taken. And, again, uh, I, I don't think we're looking at uh, uh, being overly aggressive with people who have medical issues and, and again, and look at uh, uh, supplying themselves for that medical need as opposed to people who are involved in, in grow ups and organized crime and, and making large profits. That's not what, what we want to do. We don't, we, we, we don't want to see that uh, people who have medical issues being uh, penalized other, other than uh, what the regulations uh, state. Allison, I'd, I'd be curious to know of the people that you know in the community that uh, require medical marijuana, is everybody like-minded? Is everybody like you saying, I'm just going to do what I've been doing because it's all I can afford, it makes sense for me, and I'll just deal with, you know, the repercussions? Basically, yes, and we're getting as many of the 40,000 patients from all across Canada to go to Parliament Hill on April 1st to protest this. I will be speaking in the Charles Lynch press room that day with seven other people, and we are going to tell the members of Parliament and parliamentarians all across this country how we feel about this issue. Excellent. April 1st, Parliament Hill. You Allison Merton that. and Superintendent Ron Tavener, thank you both for joining us. We appreciate you. your, your input on the subject. And thank, thank you, you Allison. So and thank you, Mark and Liz. Thank, thank you, Ron. And thank you, Mark and Liz and everybody. Thank you.